Triple Crown Edition. We are on the other side of the big three-year-old races, Ed DeRosa, with the Paddock Prince. And David, before we get to the Triple Crown races, exciting as they were, especially the Belmont Stakes, we got to talk about your Sunday at Belmont Park. You lit it up. Yeah, I did. Um, I got lucky yesterday. I had a 20 to 1 shot to kick off the pick five and then had my single win the last. He was going 44 in a New York bred main um, turf claimer. He got passed and re rallied and somehow won by a nose. It was a, it was a good result. I had a good Belmont day, especially early on. So it was a good weekend overall. Love it. Uh, yeah, the, the, the re-break is very frustrating when it goes against you, but when you uh, snatch victory from the hands of defeat, all the sweeter. And uh, you also, before even the pick five, I really appreciated that you made that big price count. You hit a, a nice double a few times, so it was all gravy once you got to the pick five, but it was listed in the sheet, so we'll put that link down below. Uh, not the first $1,000 pick five, the Paddock Prince has given out this year. So uh, sign up. Plenty of action left this summer. Belmont the rest of the way. What's the next big package, Saratoga? Yeah, we got Belmont the rest of the way. Be doing some Ellis Park at, or Churchill at Ellis Park since it's obviously still the Churchill Downs races. So I got to finish out that meet. And then we got Saratoga and Del Mar coming up. So it'll be a fun You're summer. You're going to do but... the uh, Ohio Derby at Thistledown? No, I like two fills in that race. I don't think I need to tell anybody else. I mean, I don't know who else was left to run in that race. Besides, two uh, I saw Bishop. Uh, was it Bishop's Bay? Well, he's he's the horse to bet. He just lost to Archangelo, so right. everybody's going to bet him. Not two fills, uh, and that's a great segue into this three-year-old division. Uh, enough with the uh, the platitudes, but great job, sir. So that was a really nice lick there. But nice. uh, yeah, three-year-old, different winners of all the classics, none of which were the reigning champion Forte, but. If you look at what he accomplished in Florida and then a second off the long bench in the Belmont, I definitely understand the take that he's still the best three-year-old. I went with Mage because he actually won the race everyone wants to win and came out of what I think is the best region this year being Florida, but Forte certainly right there with him. Yeah, this is a pretty captain obvious statement, but I hope Mage and Forte and a lot of these horses all come back in the Jim Dandy and the Travers because I feel like, and not really the Jim Dandy to a sense, but most of them show back up in the Travers so we can decide this a little more. But I think if the um, the Eclipse was tomorrow, there would be three really good horses at this point that could be vowing for the um, Eclipse. But right now, I, I would probably say Forte is at the top because he has beat Mage twice. I know Mage didn't have great trips. Well, it's only three and four starts. Beat him twice. He did beat him twice, but Mage did win the world's biggest race. So I think we're going to have to, this is going to have to be more decided at Saratoga this summer. And I know Mage and I'm guessing Forte is going to point for there because if you remember Ness, Ness last year ran into Belmont and then she dominated the two Saratoga races. So maybe I'm not comparing the two, but if Forte can rebound out of the Belmont, I feel like he could have a big Saratoga for two races. And we can't forget about the Arabian brothers because <laughs> both of those, I mean, I don't know what Arabian Lion will do next, but I saw that he might stretch back out. I'm sure Arabian Knight will go to the Haskell, and those two hopefully can show up in the Travers as well. But, yeah, it looks like um, this division's turning out pretty deep, it seems, or competitive, should I say. Yeah, and uh, the horse who kick, kicked us off, or at least to, to connect the dots to the division, was two fills who, uh, you know, based on your poll, some people chimed in with his name. Some feel he may have even been best in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, we'll see about that. But uh, he's going to the Ohio Derby at Thistledown before what I imagine. He'll go to the be, Haskell, right? Uh, yeah, the Haskell and then, yeah. you know, the Travers. So uh, the owners of these horses are, you know, saying all the right things in terms of wanting to face each other. Archangelo, of course, out of the Belmont uh yeah, like you said, that this I wouldn't is actually, toss this arm. This is either. a deep division. I think this arm is getting good too. I feel like he's a gun runner. That's you can just tell he's. I thought his race yesterday in the Matt Wynn Derby was pretty good, and I, he's been more forward. I feel like he's a horse that by the Travers could be a serious horse because Asmussen's obviously really good with horses and progressing them. Yeah, and the thing with uh, Disarm, I go back to is, you know, he was second in the Louisiana Derby. And after that, Steve was, you know, hey, you know, thinking he had enough points and that they would go to the Kentucky Derby from there. They ended up needing to get some points in the Lexington, but 
clearly the barn is very high on this horse. And Steve was actually at Ellis yesterday, which uh, I don't want to say surprised me. He definitely supports his big horses, but I thought that was a big vote of confidence uh, in terms of, you know, where this horse is and the, the pecking order of his barn that he should Yeah, because he there. swept the um, two stakes at Belmont, two two-year-old races. Oh, yeah, he won both two-year-old races at two Belmont yesterday. Yeah, Interesting, yeah. And he so, could have stayed at Belmont, I guess, yesterday because he was yeah, outside. Yeah, uh, got his picture taken re regardless of where he was. But, yeah, good point on Disarm. And uh, the one thing, the Philly showed up in a couple of polls, not yours, thankfully. Uh, pretty mischievous. Certainly, I, I mean, you'd have to be a fool to say she's not the leader of the three-year-old Philly division. I haven't seen enough to suggest that she could run with the males, though. No, I don't. Do, are people saying that she could run with the males? Well, someone asked who the best three-year-old, what Ruben did, and his poll got plenty of answers, so solid sample size, and she was the winner. Yeah, she's she's definitely the leader of the Philly division, but she does not strike me as a horse that could compete with the likes of um, Forte and Mage and the Arabian Brothers and – all those type horses. So, yeah, I don't – I mean, she's definitely – though. I mean, she's going to be tough in these races at Saratoga um, coming up in the CCA Oaks in the Alabama. I'm guessing she'll run in those two races if everything goes well. That division, on the other hand, is not looking too strong at this point. I saw no, wet paint. I mean, it's her and everyone else at this point. Uh, I know wet paint's coming back. Did you have a chance to see Loved yesterday at Ellis? That was I did. Impressive. She's good. She's good. I would. I, I don't think that you can't really keep them separate at this point. I'm guessing Loved is going to go to the CCA Oaks as well. I mean, I don't know what other race you can run in. Yeah, I mean, there's the the Molly Pitcher and things like that. But yeah, if you you want a Grade One, wait, she's three, uh, isn't she? Yeah. Oh, it's a Molly Pitcher for older. I think the Molly's four. You're right. right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think there's any other. Monmouth races. Oaks is what I was was. You're right. For. You're right. There is the Monmouth Oaks and a Delaware Oaks. But yeah, if you want a Grade One, like. It's, it's Saratoga or bust at this point of the year. Yeah, so, no, I agree with you. Brendan Walsh has probably two of the best three-year-old fillies, and they're good dolphins. I think a dolphin has 75 good horses at this point. <laughs> Including uh, Cody's Wish uh, being another one of them, uh, super impressive in the Met Mile. Would you say he's the, the best horse in training right now in America? If you don't go by distance of horses, I would say he's one, and I'd probably have elite power too. Uh, Lee Power is good. And what about the Pletcher Turf Horse who won the Manhattan up to the mark? Yeah, he is. He is. Uh, if you're going to count a Turf Horse in there, he was probably, he's obviously the best Turf Horse in America. He has a, if you watch his races in the turf now, when, when I read goes to the stick, that horse just takes off and yeah. he's tractable. So, yeah. Unless the Euro, he can't get 12 furlongs. If he keeps progressing in the same way he's going, I mean, I'm not saying he's as good as bricks and mortar, but he's on that like trajectory to win every grade one race in America in a season and be a favorite in the breeders. Obviously it's a long way to go and he's got to get there and Europe's going to have good horses. But at this point, I don't think there's any, I mean, there was two Europeans in the um, Manhattan that everybody thought had a chance and he just demolished yeah. everybody. I, I mean, I, I bet Ottoman. Uh, so I'm a little biased. He, had a weird here. Trip. I, he did get shut off. Um, but I'm not sure, sure it would have mattered because, like you said, when up to the marks, ask the question, he just responds uh, impressively. So I would think the Arlington Million is on the radar. That's I saw that. Order. That's so, what they said. Yeah, yeah they said it make, makes sense. And like you said, it's sort of a bricks and mortar style campaign. And then uh, I guess we'll close out instead of going long on the turf, going short. Uh, Caravel, I mean. She, she has to get beat eventually, maybe. Not. <laughs> well, I, I, mean, I'm for, I tweeted, I'm literally 0 for 19 trying to beat her. Every race I try to beat her because she gets all these soft trips. And she just she just keeps beating me. and, beat yeah, me. and it, well, She I, just keeps running. I don't know how soft the trips are, right? I mean, she, it's not like she isn't running away at the end. No, but the thing about her is she gets soft trips because she puts herself in the race. So she's creating her own good trip by the way they're forward and she breaks and – I was big on big invasion in that race and turning for home. I thought Caravelle was going to finally stop and here comes big invasion and she never stops. She just keeps winning. So I saw the breeders cup this year. Is at five furlongs? Yeah. It's, uh, they're it's not going down either. the hill for they're the not. Spring? They voted for five furlongs and they even have, they even have the shoot there. So they have, you know, they have the shoot and the downhill. So they could have right. run six furlongs out of the shoot. 
So, I mean, Caravelle going five furlongs might be a little tough, but I just had to throw it out there how stupid it is. It's not down the hill. Yeah, no, down the hill. Uh, I mean, to me, that's Santa Anita. That's part of the charm. Yeah, and five furlong races are no fun for anybody. Yeah, agreed. Well, yeah. we'll dish on that closer to the Breeders' Cup, of course, but saw some great performances this week. Uh, but to recap, Forte for you on top for the three-year-olds? Yeah, slightly. I'd probably put Forte over Mage. And I, I don't, I wouldn't be surprised if I keep saying the Arabian brothers, but Arabian Lion and Arabian <laughs> Knight, they got, I mean, Arabian Lion might be the most talent, raw, talented three year old at this point. I don't know what his best distance is, but he really seems like he's coming into his own at this point. No, and I mean, we made the bricks and mortar comparison with up to the mark and hard not for me, hard not to think of iron with the Arabian Lion. Uh, did he win know. the Haskell? He did, and he, you know, he had the seven furlong race, and there was, you know, can he stretch out? And, you know, they did in the Breeders' Cup to a mile and a quarter, and, you know, that maybe shared belief didn't get the, the best run at him that day anyway, but, you know, clearly he, he got trained up to that race and could see similar for the same trainer, just like up to the mark, you know, maybe a mile and a half they'll avoid until they have to, but. It is interesting. The Breeders' Cup Classic this year, I know we're so far away from it, but it might be all three-year-olds. I mean, you'll have, like, Art Collector, I guess, but if Cody's Wish can't stretch out for some reason, because I saw they might run him in the Whitney, there's not many. The older division is really slacking yeah. for two don't, turns. Don't sleep on Rich Strike. I know. He might turn into the next cigar with that trainer change. <laughs> we'll, we we got to see. With the, I agree with you, though. If he can't. I would, think a, I would think a trainer and rider change. Rider actually might be more important than trainer change at this point. So is he running in the um, Stephen Foster? I have not seen. I mean, I that, that makes some sense. And, you know, Ellis, a uh, little homey track for him. So. Didn't he go to the Woodward or, or the um, Whitney? I don't know. I haven't seen what he's doing. Uh, that would be pretty – because this Foster is July 1st. So In the Whitney, August 6th again? It's like August 7th. Oh, is it? Okay. so Yeah, yeah it's, it's the first week. that weekend in, first weekend in August, whatever it is. The best, that's the best people. If you've never been to Saratoga, that's the best weekend to go to Saratoga. Whitney? Yeah. Because it's packed. Be there? Uh, probably. That's what, that's my, it's packed, but it's not too packed. Like Travers is like, it's just slammed, but Whitney's right. fun because the sale. So there is people there. It's, it's happening. All right. It's happening. He says, my I'll be at the Hamiltonian that weekend. I will not be at the Hamiltonian. Um, <laughs> I'll probably be at Saratoga, but, you know, we can have HRN people everywhere, I guess. Exactly. And I think, didn't they do a double last year? Oh, you're Acon, oh yeah. That was fun. I, I feel like well, I do remember something connected. Where can you go from there, but out? I, that was, I think that was the best closing you could possibly have on a dish. Love it. All right, well, we'll dish again. What's not, What do we got next week? What's, Nothing what's really. Monmouth has their um, Haskell Quiet. preview day. Belmont, good night, Olives running in the bed of roses, but there's not anything crazy going on this weekend. But um, so the, ne the next big like weekend of races is the Belmont Derby and Stephen Foster. I think they're the same air, same time frame. Yeah. All right. Which beginning in July. So Saratoga is only um, four weeks away, away right? from Thursday, I think. Wow. Well, we'll be ready. And every time I think of Saratoga now on this dish, I think of chocolate gelato on opening day last year. <laughs> and she was she she was terrible yesterday in her return race, but Todd will figure her out. Hopefully. Yeah. All right. Paddock Prince, uh, make sure you uh get a sheet. Big, big winners on Sunday, including a what was it forty two hundred pick five? Forty three hundred, I think. But yes, forty two hundred. We can round up forty three hundred. Yeah. Forty three hundred. More than $4,000. So yes, correct. Get it. Picks.horseracingnation.com. Good luck.